The United Center in Chicago, the site for day two of the first ever Big Ten postseason tournament of championship week presented by 7-Up continues with the quarterfinal round today in our first matchup, Iowa against Michigan. The number 18 Wolverines and the fifth-seeded Hawkeyes first of four today, followed by Minnesota and top seed Michigan State. And then later on, number two seed Illinois, the co-champs against yesterday's upset winners, Wisconsin, which beat Penn State by one great nightcap. Indiana and Purdue round three coming up around 10 Eastern tonight. Welcome again to Chicago. Dave Barnett, Quinn Buckter. Certainly for Michigan a chance to not only perhaps set up a chance at a rematch tomorrow with Michigan State, but also improve their seedings in the eyes of the selection committee. And for Iowa, if there are still doubts in the uh, selection committee in terms of uh, their worthiness as an NCAA team, they can go a long way toward perhaps erasing those today. Iowa, the good young backcourt, the two freshmen, Dean Oliver and Ricky Davis need to remember that it's not all on their shoulders today. No, I don't think they should think that way at all. I think they have a very solid team. And in Dean Oliver, you've got a guy that can handle the ball, has great confidence. They've wanted him since he was a sophomore in high school. And Ricky Davis is very skilled, athletic player, can make a lot of plays. But they're no longer just freshmen. They've been through a full year playing in big-time basketball. Macy Obaston will play, will not start. Remember, he missed four games because of a fracture in his right foot. Robert Trailer, perhaps because of that, more than ever needs a good start today. Yeah, and, and Robert Trailer has actually played very well when Macy Obaston has been out. He has the ability to do a lot of things. 15 points, you know he can score, but he's starting to attract a lot of attention. His real improvement has been his ability to find shooters. They keep two on the floor. Tractor gets it right out to Lewis Bullock to knock down that three. That ability to find the open man by Tractor, knock down the shot by the Wolverines is going to be important for them to win the game. Should be entertaining. The only previous matchup, a Michigan win back in early February, 80 to 66. The winner goes on to the semis. They can make it if they try. You can't see it, but it's absolutely essential to the comfort, economy, and resale value of your home. Tell them what it is. Just a second. There we go. Insulation. If it's not right, you will see it in higher heating and cooling costs. And I might add that insulation prices are going up. So now's the time to call Vasey Insulation. Quality insulation will pay off. And that's a promise from me, Perry Smith. I own the company. Hey, he's good. It's here. TCI now has digital cable available. You can receive more channels, more convenience, and more control. Best of all, TCI has the Navigator on-screen guide that allows even more convenience and control with your television viewing. With this remote control, you can easily plan viewing schedules in advance, order pay-per-view, or simply channel surf. Parents can use the parental control lockout to block out programs by title, rating, or channel. Sign up for TCI Digital Cable now and receive Stars and Encore free for three months. Oh, man, I think we're lost. Don't worry, Mr. Henry. Oh. Across America, the one name people still rely on is Cellular One. <laughs> That's a good scout. Autobuytel.com. I'm going to buy the car I want. Your car is ready, My and you did it all online, even the financing. Cool. Low-cost car buying from the comfort of your own pajamas. Miss Plum, I can smell your recently delivered pizzeria pizza. And while I'm appalled at your wicked little plan to lure me into your tawdry web with the promise of a deliciously top pizza, Miss Plum, I am but a man weakened by the siren's call of a well-risen crust. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. She wants me. For fresh baked pizza at home, it's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. <laughs> ESPN 2's presentation of Championship Week is presented by 7-Up. 7-Up and your local 7-Up butler invite you to try the crisp new taste of 7-Up. And in part by Nintendo 64. Get in or get out. And by U.S. Navy. Navy, let the journey begin. And welcome.
Welcome back inside Studio B. Dave Ryan with you on Frantic Friday. So far, 16 tickets have been punched to the NCAA Big Dance by weekends, and 30 automatic bids will have gone out. But between now and then, a lot of spots to be determined, a lot of action to follow, including the ACC quarterfinals down in Greensboro. This game going on right now on ESPN. Maryland has a nine-point lead on Georgia Tech. 7.50 left in the second half. Terps looking for their 19th win of the year. Updates all day and night from here. First, let's go to Chicago. Dave Barnett, Quinn Buckner in the Big Ten. All right, Dave, we're set for number 18, Michigan and Iowa, the first of our quarterfinals in the Big Ten Tournament at the United Center. Dr. Tom Davis and the Hawkeyes. Tom in his 12th year, hoping for his ninth NCAA bid for Iowa. And his lineup today will include the freshman Dean Oliver, Kent McCausland, Ricky Davis, Daryl Moore, the senior, and Ryan Bowen up front. Bowen, the all-time steals leader, two under three in his career, and also a record 74 steals this year, a single season mark. The interim coach, Brian Ellerby in Michigan with Bullock, Reed, Conlon, Ward, and Trailer. And again, Macy O'Baston is available, but while he was out, Gerard Ward played the best ball of his Wolverine career, 18 per game in the four that Baston missed. Brian and Ellerby at 21 and 8. Many think will still need uh, not just a good showing in this tournament, but a good long run in the NCAAs to erase that interim. Yeah, I would think that would probably have to be the case, but as long as the tractor is pulling this team along, I think he has a, a very good chance. I, I've watched uh, Robert Tractor Trailer just improve yearly. I think the biggest improvement is just his ability to find people. He didn't look before. He's now under control. Ed Hightower, Mike Sanzier, and Sam Licklider. The officials for our first quarterfinal. Full day of basketball at the United Center now underway, and Iowa controls. Tractor trailer just about <laughs> running down Ed Hightower. What a way to start your day. Oh, uh, not, not a good day for Ed Hightower. Tractor runs him over. Now, Iowa comes out, and they'll run this offense, and it's kind of a spread offense. Michigan in there, man-to-man. -man. What they want you to do is, is just get lost trying to guard your man. And now they'll go in, and Michigan here is going to go into a 1-2-3 a zone at this point. Tipped out by Conlon, 7 on the shot clock. you got to be careful when you're out on the court, because there are a lot of things that can happen. You can see traction. Oh, oh, sorry. Almost took his back off. Up and ready for duty. Well run inbounds play, but then it went out of the hand of Davis just as he was ready to rattle that rim. And at the other end, it's Gerard Ward missing. Trailer there to put it back. Can't get either one. Now, I think in addition to the guys that we talked about, Trailer playing well, I think Gerard Ward has to be more of a barometer of who Michigan is. Well, if his barometer is how he played in the four games without Baston, that will bode well. 18 points, seven and a half rebounds, and two career high games for Gerard Ward, including uh, one in their near miss at Michigan State. Up with the three, Davis tipped over for McCausland to chase down, and Iowa maintaining the possession. Yeah, this is normal Iowa. They, if they keep their center, keep the center away, and then you bring track the trailer from the basket. The other thing it creates for Iowa is rebounding lanes. They got that last rebound because they were able to get lanes. Conlon reaches in to strip the driving board, and Travis Conlon pays off at the other end. Yeah, but good play great by Lewis Bullock because he drew the defense Oliver, and then Travis at 6'5", which is too tall for Oliver to recover two. year the best three-point shooter in the country and not bad at all this year 47 percent but that was all the way down to 29th nationally no one has ever repeated as the three-point champ gets it back from bowen now down the lane davis and he stripped but gets it back throws it to no one pretty good defense on the part of michigan if they all of a sudden start i was throwing the ball around it's because there's good defense you can see what happened in the season uh, right there, February 1st with Iowa. Lewis Bullock, 5 of 8 from the three-point line, and Michigan shot it extremely well at 50, almost 51%. Iowa lately, though, has had the upper hand in this series. They have won four of the last six, even including that defeat. Robbie Reed, whose uh, shot was great at the beginning of the year, then he lost it in hope in the last couple of uh, efforts. He got it back. Good three-point threat when he has it going. Conlon almost caught no man's land. Reed not nearly as effective from two. 
But another thing about Reed, he's really been struggling with the shot. He shot it well the last time Michigan played, but he's, he's had some problems getting that jump shot going, and that, for him, is a big part of his game. Ricky Davis, Iowa's scoring leader as a freshman, just under 15 per game, knifes in and draws the foul. So they can run the clock down, and because you got a freshman that can break the defense down once they spread you, Iowa, that is. Tom Davis likes to spread you out and then break you down, and Davis is very good at that. Not much for Ricky Davis in the first meeting. Parade All-America, like Dean Oliver, as you said, they both committed before their sophomore years in high school. Assistant coach Rich Walker convincing Tom Davis that uh, they were worth that much faith, even though they had their entire high school careers in front of them, to go ahead and try and lock them up early. This worked out great in, uh, in both regards, for both Davis and Oliver. This is where Iowa likes to do, and particularly after free throws, they like to come out and try to press. You see, Michigan has Trailer bringing the ball up the court, maybe because of his, so, his ability to throw it over the top. That's how they beat Iowa the last time they played. Ryan Lourdes but has checked it along with Kyle oh. Galloway. Inside Trailer lost it, got it back, and lays it home. See how he just stays after it? Because he had two opportunities to quit on it after good hands, just stayed active. Galloway originally listed to start this game, and Davis went with uh, a lineup including Galloway, three freshmen and all Iowa products toward the end of the year, but he went with the senior Moore in this one. Davis having a tough time with the handle today. The Davis is, when Gerard Ward is active, he's, he's pretty hard to play against, but I still think Ricky Davis, if he wants to, can beat him. Two, three zone, Michigan plays. Once they get under 10 seconds, that's why. Good up. Oh, baby! Like that, Ricky Davis. Woo. <laughs> Iowa crowd on their feet after that one by Ricky Davis. Hey, Dave, you don't have to be an Iowa fan to appreciate that play. That was a heck of a move by anybody's standards. He has all four for the Hawkeyes. See, back and way off of the, whoever's out front, they got kind of like a box in one, it looks like, yeah, on um, on Lewis Bullet. Wide open, three by Robbie Reed. Yeah, that'll make it difficult, but they're playing a box in one, which means they keep one man on uh, Lewis Bullet, and then everybody else is in a zone. Owen fumbles it out of bounds with trailer bothering him on the low block. Boy, is this ever worth another look. Ricky Davis. I mean, with that got, terrific finish. You've got to have skill to be able to pull a move off like this. Get it up. up got to go to the other side. Ooh, banks open. Looks good. I'm Dan Patrick. Good night. Seven up. Nice. You know you get great lemon-lime taste with 7-Up? And you can get great prizes in 7-Up's Reach for More game. Collect labels and game pieces from specially marked packages of 7-Up. Starting March 1st, watch ESPN's Championship Week to match dance, prizes, and win. And if you're a grand prize winner, you and six friends could win a trip to New York City, a tour of ESPN Studios, and when the day's over, you might have won yourself a new best friend. Named after the sound of a gold man store. Kachuk. Last season, goalie served my name 52 times. Could have been more. But I spent over 200 minutes in the penalty box. That's the way I play hard and fast. Like NHL Breakaway 98, with rumble pack checking, high powered goal scoring, and the best graphics on ice. NHL Breakaway 98. Looks like we got a new leader of the pack. Acclaimed sports. Sweat the details. It is one of the most powerful warships with satellite communications, radar and propulsion systems that are the most advanced in the world. But USS Mitcher cannot do a single thing without you. Because the most important part of USS Mitcher is her crew of over 250 sailors who every day embark on a journey of honor, of courage, and of commitment. Call 1-800-USA-NAVY. Let the journey begin. 7-4 early lead for Michigan. Tractor Trailer has gotten himself established already. Yeah, he's got good, good inside position. You see the front position, which means nobody is back here. And watch, there's a lob pass that'll go up. You'll see the help will come late. Good pass there by Bullock. Controlled by right there by Trailer. Gets it knocked, stays after it, gets it to go in, even though he was under the basket. Quick feet, good hands by Trailer. 
For the moment, he's out. Macy Obasted makes his first appearance. Four games with a chip fracture of the right foot. Gerard Ward, who picked up so much of the slack in his absence, misses straight on. And Iowa with a chance to run. Another steal by Conlon, who has had a terrific start defensively. Yeah, he's got a good floor game, does Conlon. Yeah, man, his ability to read things. They make that call that time. I think they get a foul. But Conlon anticipates, and I think is a good general for them. First of all, you don't throw cross-court passes. You can see Conlon saw it all the way. Rucker had no chance. Coming back on, there's a foul on the other end. Couldn't get it in bounds in time, and so Reed has to burn his 20. Championship week, of course, culminates with the men's tournament selection special presented by GTE that Sunday at 6.30 Eastern. And then the women's NCAA selection special presented by State Farm at 7.30. All the brackets will be decided on Sunday. You'll see them here on ESPN. ESPN 2. Iowa at 29. They had a very rough spell in the middle of the conference season. A four-game losing streak and five out of six, but they recovered and uh, won four of their last five to go nine and seven to get the fifth seed. Yeah, they, they actually played pretty well for the most part. I mean, they, the, everybody thought they were for real when they went into Indiana and then in Bloomington and just blew Indiana out. And they played pretty well. And then they had that four-game skid you talked about, and then their chances looked a little slim, but I think they worked themselves back in good position for a burst. Lewis Bullock got his first two. Travis Conlon at least a couple of steals and had his hand on one other's trailer returns and it's time for war. Michigan off a closer than expected win in their regular season wind up. That was Saturday over Wisconsin, 76 to 70. Deep three, McCausland. Yeah, you got to get out on McCausland. You, you already talked about his ability to shoot it deep. See, again, a little bit of a zone defense. Don't tap it real hard. All I want to do is make you use up time here. These two teams, the two best three-point shooting teams in the Big Ten, and two of the better in the country at 51% apiece. Trailer, really drawing iron that time, and it's rebounded by Daryl Moore. A superb rebounder for a 6-2 guy, former walk-on. Well, Lewis is still, I mean, Lewis is feeling it. But I'll tell you what, what's happening with Ward and uh, Trailer did the same thing. They were so wide open, they didn't think they could miss that shot. They both shot him short. He thought he had that three. Another chance for Iowa to tie or lead. 14 minutes in the first half. The war gets pushed from behind by that. Knowing where people are and on the floor is always important, and especially where shooters are. You see Kit McCausland come out there. Tractor goes out late. He called this three points. You see two of the best three-point shooting teams and two of the three best three-point shooters in the country. Inbounded for Oliver. Oh, and a quiet start so far. He uh, struggled with a sprained knee in the middle of the Big Ten campaign. So has the brace on it, as you can see. And it really hurts his mobility. That was where he was uh, most effective, Davis, because he was more mobile than most centers. And he doesn't want to go down there. That's just a intuitive thing. You don't want to go down there in the half step, if you will, with trailer. He's just too big. They do feel he's uh, right at about 100% for this tournament, though. McCausland with the shot clock winding down. Ball movement superb. He's throwing across the top to the right side. It comes to the baseline, back out to the left side. Iowa finding the right people. And a little three-quarter court pressure. Now Reed matched up against Daryl Moore. Still I'm sorry, well, they're in the box and one. They're just what they are. There's zone on everybody except for Lewis Bullock. That's a box and one. And that leaves Reed open for his second three. Great sign for Michigan. Reed hitting a couple of early trays and the margin back to three. That bodes well for Michigan because what it may give Reed is a chance to, to get them out of there. Get him out of that zone. And Bowen hurtled down the baseline. Almost got undercut on the foul. Maceo Baston second. Michigan foul Maceo Baston just picked up his second. And he's trying to figure out, he's asking the official, what did he do? And I, I'm, I, he may have tapped the foot, but I'm trying to see what happened here, too. 
Oh, he was bent over backwards, but I don't know if did he jump over his back. <laughs> but the official felt that he was bent over backwards, and yeah. they called the foul. They saw a hip check, but it looked like Baskin was doing everything he could to avoid the contact. Well, I believe Robbie Reed to get a short break as Gerard Ward comes back in, because now Baskin has two, and we still have 12 minutes in the first half. Owen closing well with 20, his third 20-point game in the Hawkeye win Saturday over Indiana as they nail down the fifth seed. Get down by McCausland. Back, back, back. Young spot. Don't come through. Well, it's all right to have tractor trailer throwing the ball. The only thing that would worry me is late in the game, he, he has a little bit of a tendency to get a little lazy on passes late in the game that he just doesn't throw with enough zip on it. Tomlin measured the three, but he's got uh, Big Bowen on him. Six, seven, tough to shoot that one over him. It's also tough to make the lob to track the trailer who's being guarded, you know, more is guarded. So Conlon over Moore, and J.R. Koch saves the rebound for Dean Oliver. Oliver all the way through the entire Michigan defense. Poor job defensively because no one on the Michigan team stopped him. Normally should be uh, Travis Conlon if he's the one back. Michigan is going to take a 20 seconds. Defensive transition against Iowa is always important, but no one stepped there. You see opening the gate, playing a little, uh, I don't know what you call that. That's a swinging gate by Jared Ward, Gerard Ward to miss that. Dean Oliver, the Iowa Mr. Basketball honoree, two-time All-Stater, and the numbers uh, for Dean this year, he led him in assists. In fact, in his very first game, 12 assists, the uh, single game record. That was in their debut against Chicago State. He did everything he could as a high school player, almost a four-point student, had two state titles with 38 points in the last final, the last high school game he played at Mason City, a two-time All-Stater. Ties it for the fourth time, 12 all, under 12 minutes in the first half. Baston up high. Rod Ward up with a three. That is, he's the one that, you know, we've watched a number of games. He can do it because what they'll do is they forget about Rod Ward and his ability to shoot the ball. Well, it looked it. like they forgot about McCausland at the other end. Yeah, they definitely forgot about him. That's hard to do the way he shot it. Conlon right, thing right through. through the middle and challenges Guy Rucker. Trailer, another putback basket. You got to challenge him. If you're zoned, you must challenge the zone or you keep Iowa to stay in it. This pace, you'd think, much easier for Iowa to keep up as the deeper by far of these two teams. Baston controls out to Bullock. How many touches so far for Sweet Lou? He'll pull up and nail the trail. Well, that's why he doesn't get many touches. Iowa doesn't want him with many touches because he can knock down the shot so well. 82nd three-pointer of the year for Bullock. Last year, the Michigan record, 101 three. For Guy Rucker, triple team. And throws up the one-hander rebounded by Daryl Moore, finally Baston. Had to be somebody open for Guy Rucker, but he tried the one-hander anyway. Better get out there. Bullock. Can't get it back to back. Chases down his board. The leaner goes for two. And with a touch, you got it. You must get to Lewis Bullock. That time he's quick to the ball on his own rebound, able to put it back in. Bullock, as he tries to slide over in front of Dean Oliver, commits the foul. Team's fourth. Bullock saved his best for the latter part of the year. Averaged 25 a game in Baston's absence. Has seven early. Somewhere a few miles from a trailhead, there is an owl who has been waiting his whole life to visit you at three in the morning and hoot. Humor him. The 1998 Isuzu Trooper, now with an advanced torque-on-demand traction system to help you discover a world that is large and is waiting. Oh, my, that was a devastating punch. The champ knocked him into next week. You never know in life. It's all over for 
other kid. You might need health insurance. It's going to be a while before we see him in the ring again. You might need long-term care insurance. But don't forget, folks, the kid is leaving here tonight with a $2 million purse. You might need help with investments. That's pretty just pain, Tom. So at the Conseco Companies, our goal is to help you protect wealth, create wealth for life. Who says you can't buy taste? My clients do it all the time. Like, let's say I find the most amazing English high-back armchair. Then I better get it in front of them immediately, or someone else will. That's why I value GTE Internet. In seconds, I can be online in Tampa while downloading huge files from an auction in Paris. I love shopping in Paris. Especially when it's with someone else's money. Dave Ryan with an First of our quarterfinals here on the Deuce in a 7-0 run by Michigan over the last minute five to open up the seven-point lead. Guy Rucker a moment ago triple teamed and threw up kind of a half-hearted hook. Good start for Rucker as a sophomore, then kind of hit a sophomore slump period mid-season. Well, a little bit of it I think might have been conditional because I don't think he was expecting to have to play as hard as he did, and I think he just wore down when they had tried to get him in shape from last year, having just sat and watched some guy. Michigan comes out in, in like a 1-2-2 two, two zone. Try to know where the shooters are, but that they don't want to allow the driver. Galloway back out for Oliver as the shot clock is at 10. And up from the corner, an air ball on the three by Galloway. Michigan, and Michigan ball. They got some good pressure out there on Galloway. He didn't get the clean look he normally gets. Maybe the best defensive sequence so far by the Wolverines. And now full court pressure from the Hawkeyes, and they bump Bullock. Well, I have, well Iowa fans don't necessarily like it, but I'm looking at both uh, Lorsman and Bullock. Neither one of them have moved, so they know that that was a foul. Lorsman got him. Just the second against the team. Ward finally spots trailer and now Michigan with some numbers if they hurry good idea what a great play Reed's third three-pointer but Lewis Bullock makes it because he stopped and did a stop and go that forced the defense to have to come get him Galloway falling out it was touched last by trailer they great awareness of each other by uh, Bullock and Reed. Well, he does a stop and go that just, w watch this, he'll do a little stop and go and the defense freezes. And then now he comes, Lewisman was the one that would have been able to go out and read, but he couldn't go because he had to help on Bullock. Hawkeyes now down 10, they've missed their last four. Davis has already had one spectacular drive. Trying to slash his way in again, and another Michigan foul on Ward, his Michigan second. Foul on the Tied at 15 when Michigan started to assert itself. Conlon back in for Blue Bull. From the corner, and another miss by the Hawkeyes. Davis bailed out by the hustle of Bowen. Had three Michigan players around it, and none of them went to the ball, all assuming that their teammate was, was going to go. Lewisman back from Galloway, and a three by Lewisman to finally end the Michigan run. Well, it was an interesting shot, but I never thought he was on balance. But he was able to get that one to go in. Lewisman, a 40% three-point shooter. Lots of threats from beyond the arc. Ward, one of them. Another rebound by Bowen, who was fifth in the Big Ten at 8.7 during the year, his third so far here. Yeah, but that was a bad shot. In fact, the trailer told him, what, we don't need a shot like that. Oliver. That's a jump ball, so it goes back to the uh, head. Michigan ball. Michigan ball. When the ball gets stuck there, that's considered just a jump ball. But tractor trailer ran down the court and said to Gerard Ward, we don't need a shot like that. And he's right. If you break the press, try to attack it. Ball gets through again. They open the gate. Ward is there again. He doesn't close it. Ball gets stuck. AC Obaston back. Josh Aslan. Michigan freshman had played very briefly. Was <laughs> heard from Brian Ellaby. I did so I fast, I wasn't was, even sure he was, it was It was brief, all right. I mean, it was almost a lot of this. Michigan has played turnover free ball for almost 12 minutes. Very sharp in just about every phase so far. Yeah, they've been strong. I was going through a, a really just kind of a 2-3 ball with a good end. 
anticipation still there. Just as soon as you mention it. There is the first turnover. Is that like three plays? It's ex apparently it is. <laughs> I didn't think it was an all-purpose jinx, but it may very well be. Bowen, a rare three for Ryan Bowen. Just his eighth of the year. Iowa, after surrendering 10 straight, comes back with six straight of their own. Yeah, and they like the tempo, too. And I can see Michigan all of a sudden not trying to rush through this defense. Hawkeyes have four threes. Michigan has five. Three of those by Robbie Reeves. Got the two best three-point shooting teams in the Big Ten, and Robbie Reed at the forefront of the marksmanship display. 53 during the year, four already. Galloway can't answer. Actually took that one maybe a little bit quick, did Galloway. He's playing, and they have him in a zone, and they've got him running all the way down to, the, to get if the ball goes into track the trailer, but he's got to cover back out. That's a tough cover for him. They are Koch in that long arm in the neighborhood of Reed that time. Decided not to challenge from there. Koch up in the air. Ward on the other side. He has a three. Good call in the first I think Michigan is really playing well. Iowa hadn't played bad, but Michigan has played strong in terms of moving the ball and moving people. They have really done knocked down seven of 11 threes. That's very strong. They will be tough to beat no matter who they play if they're shooting like this. Ask Duke. Koch rejected by Trailer. Oh, he can lob it. Reed had Baston, decides to wait for the trailer, and that's two by Ward. You were on the trailer. I thought you were talking about the tractor yeah. trailer. You're right, the trailer in the fast break that it was Jerry Ward. You are Ward. I was right there with you. You're all over. Eight straight now by Michigan. 18 to 6 now, the extended run by the Wolverines. Up by 12, their largest lead, under 6, first half. Lurisman fouled, and if that's Baston, that's 3. Trailer was there as well. It's going to be Maceo's third. No, I think what they did was they gave it to Robbie Reed. Oh, they did. You're right. That's the half the Michigan fouls. It was his third. The three-point bombing the story for Michigan. Dubuque Greyhound Park and Casino Monday through Friday from now until March 20th, you could win $100 cash every two hours from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. You could be the big old lucky winner during O Lucky Days. Register to win every Monday through Friday beginning at 9 a.m. You could be one of the 90 winners. So come out and play. Every day could be your O Lucky Day. Dubuque Greyhound Park and Casino. Come out and play. Years ago, the personal computer was invented in a garage. Cool. Hey, check this out. So why is it that about the only place to buy one today is in a warehouse? Hello? 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 Can anybody help me? Well, computer renaissance is different. We think that buying a personal computer should be a personal experience. And we sell used computers that can do everything you need for a lot less money than at a warehouse. I have a question. Computer renaissance. We buy, sell, and trade used and new computer equipment. So there I am, standing at the free throw line, the finals of the women's NCAA tournament. I dribble once, I dribble twice. I say to myself, this is for all the supermodels. But I'm not going to get into that right now. I'm at the free throw line. They taught me how to stare blankly into space. Into space. Stop, I've got to concentrate here. I'm at the free throw and line. This is the finals of the NCAA tournament. Quarterfinals. First one underway. Michigan leading this one by 12, and that'll be followed at 4 Eastern again here on the Deuce with Minnesota and top seed co champion Michigan State. ESPN Plus at 7 30 for the other co champ, Illinois and Wisconsin. And Indiana Purdue round number three tonight at 10 Eastern, right back here on ESPN 2. 18 6 run by Michigan, fueled by three after three. 43 21 at the 540 mark of the half. Come back out into their 1 2 2 zone. Oliver and Davis have had.
had some impressive moments so far, but they need some help from everybody else. McCausland has two trays. Rucker for Moore. Aslan blocking his pass, so it's Rucker with his first point. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Rucker was able to get it, but I'm looking at Brian Ellaby, and it looked like it was three, uh, three seconds, and he was really begging for it from the official. A nice pass inside for Rucker. Lottie Reed, four out of five. Tomlin did a nice job orchestrating. Inside it goes for Trailer, knocked away by Ricky Davis. Yeah, Davis knocked it. Trailer tried to grab it and knocked it out of bounds. For Michigan, more threes than twos, and for Iowa, equal distribution. Yeah, but you've got to think if you're Michigan or if you're Iowa that you're in pretty good shape because if some those, that's always adds, uh, I mean that equals out. Just the nature of the beast there. Walker working that right off the top of the tractor trailer's head, out for a three ah. over the top of the causeway. I don't know if the officials even saw it. Guy Rucker and Josh uh, Aslan were pushing each other, and they one just shoved the other, and I don't think they even saw it. Ellaby saw it. He's trying to get somebody's <laughs> attention and kind of mind exactly what he saw. Oh, you got to throw that trailer. He's one-on-one. -on -one. It's one of the few times they were ever going to get him one-on-one. -on -one. They're now fronted by Rucker. There they go the other way. Conlon will try to get into the act, and Travis Conlon has a three. Well, oh, that puts pressure on your team. 42% during the year for, Con for a Conlon on his three-point shooting. Now the biggest lead of the game, up to 13 points. You now, Conlon came into school with the, what they were talking about with the Fab Five Two. He came in with Albert White. Uh, that, that transferred, and Willie Mitchell that transferred to um, Albert White is at Missouri. Mitchell is at UAB. Conlon was going to be one of the great players. And then Gerard Ward, they were talking about that being 5-5-2, five, five, and it didn't work out, but Conlon has always been the most solid of players out of that group, I think. Both seniors, Bassett also a senior. They're going to go out Ooh, and shook uh, up. blaze of glory after some disappointing postseason. Bullets shook run up. through. <laughs> You're talking about a milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> High entertainment value in this first half. Nope. Huh? Yeah, I mean, Michigan, I'm telling you, this is probably as good as they can play. Particularly shoot it from the perimeter. And Tractor is not going to factor necessarily on the offensive end. I don't know if it's as well as they can play. You have to review that Indiana pick. But this is right. Uh, no, 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 no. You're right. I stand corrected. Inside, it is a reverse follow by Daryl Moore. That's almost such an aberration, though, that you almost have to discount it when you compare it to every other game Michigan has played. Yeah, but I'd be hard-pressed to disagree with you about how good it is. It is an excellent, and that's an excellent play there by Davis with the steal and the finish. United Center fans have seen that from another number 23. He's had two great slashes. Touch last by Iowa's Daryl Moore as he battled with Robbie Reed over on the side right in front of the Michigan bench. It will remain Michigan ball. Wolverines by 11 with two and a half in the first half. most beautiful thing. It was like nothing I had ever seen before. He would practice all the time. Broke every window in the neighborhood. He went on to do things with physics I didn't think possible. When you're using an American Express card, nothing's out of bounds. Boundaries for golf, not life. go far from the lights of the blazing electric metropolis and look up. The 1998 Isuzu Trooper, equipped with a new advanced torque on demand traction system to go places the power company can't find. We've asked the coaches of champions to taste the breakfast of champions. Crispy for sure. Crunchy, crispy. I like them. I wish I had a bowl twice as big. These are so good. The championship taste of Wheaties. I'd buy them in the biggest box they sell them in. 
Michigan rolling along with an 11 point lead. It's mostly from the perimeter that they built it. Trailer has uh, combined inside for just two out of four shooters. He's really attracting a lot of attention. You'll see that Iowa tries to force him to get the ball away from his normal position. Didn't get set to shoot that shot, but he again attracts attention all around. You can see that right there, but what it allows is if you swing the ball to the weak side because he's on the right, you can get a three pointer on the left, and that's what Michigan has been doing. Haven't needed all that much from him. They've hit their last five shots and are 60% for the half. 15 for 25, including 8 of 12 from 3. Ward with a couple of those threes and settles for two here. You know, he is so much more composed than he was last year. He had knee surgery his first two years at Michigan and didn't do a whole lot. He's now being very comfortable he's four for seven but when he gets ready to shoot he looks like he can make the shot he didn't look like that last year no hesitation all purpose yeah that, in that's his game right exactly now. what it is all purpose 10 points by ward good feed inside for Moore. that had to be tough to spot with all those bigger bodies down there surrounding the 6-2 daryl moore bullock to ward reverses and chased down by Moore and Reed, and this one was cut last by Robbie Reed. Yeah. I mean, what happened on that after that play? Lewis Bullock is telling me, hey, come on, you got to make that play, telling Gerard Ward that. And he's right. You got to lay up. You've got to figure out a way to get it up and get fouled or get it in the basket. Hawkeye still had time for a run, a little confidence at the half. Davis bottom four on the inside. And he gets bumped, I think, by the tractor trailer. He will be called for... No, they're going to put it on Bullock. Lewis Bullock with his second. Michigan Collins on number 11, Lewis Bullock. Second personal. 29 possessions uh, for Michigan. Trailer has touched it, Quinn, only six times and is two for four. I say you have to modify the touch. He may have touched it only two times, uh, six times, but how many times has he, has he allowed his teammates to shoot wide open shots? I mean, that's the other side that you have to you factor in when you worry about touches. He is such a factor in the paint that you are slow to recover the three-point shooters, and Michigan has taken advantage of that. Especially with Baston and Trailer combined. That's what coaches have said all year about playing Michigan. Choose your poison. You want to get killed inside by those two or take your chances for the outside shooter. Nice steal by the Hawkeyes. Lurisman pulls up from 10. Overshot off the bank. Moore is uh, grabbed in midair by Trailer. He got fouled before he had to give it to Trailer. No, well, in this case, it's going to be Reed. Yeah, I thought it was. Got it. Reed fouled him beforehand because this Trailer went up later. And I saw him come down, and I was with you. I said, I thought that was a foul, but I said, the whistle had gone. They well, if they call it on Reed, that's the call. Front end of the bonus by Daryl Moore. Robbie Reed is only foul. You know, it's uh, is just tough to figure out. That's his uh, season end career high game Saturday. That earned him another start today. Still can't figure how he got six two rebounds the way he does. He has high energy. Rebounding is not all jumping. A lot of it is position. He just threw it away again. That's twice in a row practice thrown it away. That's what I said to you earlier about him handling the ball late. You know, he'll start throwing it because he throws it casually. Hawkeye fans now with reason to get up on their feet. They've been down by as many as 13. Now we're inside the final minute and a half, and they can cut into an eight-point Michigan lead. Done enough to give them good confidence. Three by Moore, no. Trailer, good outlet this time, and they're two-on-one with Ward. Bullock off the glass. Good patience by Bullock, too, because I thought Ward had messed the play up because he never drew the defense. 11 for Bullock. Reed leads with 12, and Gerard Ward right there with 10 in the balance scoring for Michigan. What I always found is when they, if they can stay, keep Michigan in their man to man, where they've been able to throw the ball is right in the center of the zone. So don't be surprised if they try to do that again in front of Trailer or Ward. Difference of three seconds on the clocks. Ryan Lurisman back out, but they turn it over. Got a timeout. No, they, no, Moore got a timeout. 
20 second timeout. Time 20, 20 second timeout. Coming up on the halftime report presented by 7UP, it's the ESPN News Network, and uh, they will have a look at Frantic Friday as it continues in the ACC, their first quarterfinal, Georgia Tech and number 24, Maryland, underway. All that just seconds away, 7.9 seconds to be exact. Looks like what Brian Ellaby is telling his team there, they have been playing some zone peri periodically, but he's saying stay with your man. So it looks like they are going to come out, match up man, and try not to get beat. That's four seconds on the shot clock. Bowen getting Ward up off his feet. Rebound oh, trailer. Is there time? Oliver got a hand on it. No, no time shot. for the shot by Ward. But what a three-point display by both teams, and in particular, the Michigan shooting amazing beyond the arc. Even better than it was in their 14-point win against Iowa back on February 1st. ESPN News coming up. Halftime of our first Big Ten quarterfinal. It's Michigan by 10. ESPN 2's presentation of Championship Week is brought to you by Kemper Funds. Long-term investing in a short-term world. Long-term approach provided a higher level of financial consciousness. Like Kemper Total Return Fund, where $10,000 invested in 1964 would have grown to a cool $446,000 last December. Far out. Ask your financial advisor about the thinking behind every Kemper fund. Long-term investing in a short-term world. This is Unit 21, possible boy basketball game in progress. Yo, Unit 10 on the way. No, the way to no. number one. Open up your window. What's up, dog? What's up? What's up? Job of the funk police, snow and down. Somewhere a few miles from a trailhead, there is an owl who has been waiting his whole life to visit you at three in the morning and hoot. Humor him. The 1998 Isuzu Trooper, now with an advanced torque on demand traction system to help you discover a world that is large and is waiting. If I leave, I'm gone. I'm not coming back. I'm serious. It's final. Go ahead. I'm really going. Bye. I mean it. That door's locked. Clear across America, the one name people still rely on is Cellular One. Now I get to this bridge, I'm not turning around. I'm, and I mean it! This halftime report is presented by 7UP. Now, let's join the ESPN News Network. the worldwide leader in sports. This is the ESPN News Network. And hi, everybody. Brian Kenny here. We welcome those of you watching Iowa and Michigan on ESPN2. We'll get you back to the Big Ten after this halftime report. Conference tournaments across the country. We'll start with this update in the ACC. Well, it's the toughest conference in the country, and yet bubble teams everywhere. Only three teams in the ACC are considered to be locks. Duke, North Carolina, and Maryland. Clemson, Georgia Tech, Wake Forest, all looking to make a dent in the conference tournament to bring home the at-large bid. Three games today in Greensboro. Game one, the last gasp for Georgia Tech, Yellow Jackets, and Maryland. Obina Ikizi, the jumper. Maryland out to an early start. Maryland up by four. Laurent Profit, the alley-oop. Maryland still up by six. Maryland up by eight here. Sarunas Yasakavichis for three. Maryland, 70-59, to 59, up on top and in command late in the second. Rodney Elliott hits the jumper. Maryland up big, and Maryland cruising, beating Georgia Tech 83-62. to 
to 65. So Maryland sweeping the season series on the Yellow Jackets, 3-0. Georgia Tech 17-13 and now, so more than likely off to the NIT. Maryland seemingly secure, now 19-9, and solidified their spot. They also have wins over North Carolina and Kansas. They move on. Here's the breakdown in the ACC. It will be Maryland taking on the winner of North Carolina and NC State. That game is underway, just got underway 2 Eastern time. Duke already in the semifinals. They'll meet the winner of Wake Forest and Clemson. Wake and Clemson, a 7 Eastern start this evening. All these bubble teams struggling with 17 or 18 wins. Kansas laughs in your face. The Jayhawks with 31 wins already. They haven't even gotten into their conference tournament. A virtual lock for the top seed in the NCAA tournament. Mighty Kansas in the Big 12 quarterfinals. Kansas City, Missouri, Kansas, and K-State. Billy Thomas, starting guard for Kansas, out with a strained quad, but do they need him? Thump! Paul Pierce throwing it down. Paul Pierce up, little jumper, got it to go. Working hard, this time Pierce from outside. Three-point range, he had 13 in the half. Kansas up by 12. What about Rafe LaFrench? Ah! Getting ready for some shot foo. Not everything going well for the Jayhawks. K-State had to play yesterday, but working hard. Sean Rhodes. Gets the tip. K-State down by only four here. And this is close. Kansas only up by one right now. Second half. A lot of time left. Less than 13 minutes to go. But it's 41-40. Mighty Kansas only with a one-point lead. K-State did have to play yesterday to get to this one. They beat Colorado by 14. Kansas swept the season series on K-State. They're 31-3. and Their loss is coming to Maryland, Hawaii, and Missouri. The winner here moves on to play the winner of Nebraska and Baylor. Now, four games in the SEC. Alabama trying to keep it close. Brian Williams, very deep. Three, knocks it down. Alabama down by just two. Later on, Kentucky up by six. Scott Padgett to Allen Edwards. The cut and the foul. Free throw putting Kentucky up by nine. Right now, it is tied up. So, a bit of a surprise in these games. That big teams having some trouble. Alabama tying it up. It's tied at 46. Second half is underway. Alabama head coach David Hobbs prolonging the inevitable. He was told he'd be fired at the end of the year. The team, though, has gone 6-3 and three since he got the news. Alabama has won four in a row, and they're locked up with Kentucky right now in the second half. Out of the Big Ten, Bobby Knight and in Indiana advancing into the quarterfinals. The Hoosiers beating Ohio State last night get Purdue later this evening. Knight could face suspension or a fine for his in-game tirade last week, but it hasn't come down yet. There wasn't any doubt that I'd be coaching. I said that when we played at Iowa. I know the rules. And, and uh, I, I said then it was not possible that I wouldn't be coaching today. We worked like hell, I think, to, uh, to avoid uh, uh, st uh, strike out the word. Just do me one favor. Strike out the word hell because that might be unsportsmanlike conduct. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, sense a little sarcasm there, Bob. The Big East Tournament, and also the Big Ten Tournament on ESPN2. It continues 4 Eastern time, Minnesota and the number one seed, Michigan State. Then 10 Eastern, it's Bob Knight in Indiana, back for more laughs, taking on Purdue. That's later today on the Deuce ESPN2. It is the first ever Big Ten Tournament right now. Michigan with the 10-point lead. We're at the half. We'll be back with more after this. I'm Dan Patrick. Good night. Seven Up. Nice. You know you get great lemon lime taste with Seven Up. And you can get great prizes in Seven Up's Reach for More game. Collect labels and game pieces from specially marked packages of Seven Up. Starting March 1st, watch ESPN's Championship Week to match Dan's prizes and win. And if you're a grand prize winner, you and six friends could win a trip to New York City, a tour of ESPN Studios, and when the day's over, you might have won yourself a new best friend. Before my 8 o'clock flight, maybe we can talk. Otherwise, blitz over. Ah! Come on. Come on. Oh, God. Oh, no. That's battery. No matter what my customers drive, they depend on AC Delco batteries. They last up to 30% longer. I'm sure they do. Just give me the generic equipment, okay? AC Delco. If you're not asking for it, battery. you're asking for it. I remember the day he came to our farm, just before harvest time. And he told me about something that had never been done before. How soybeans like mine were now being used for a new kind of cooking oil. Seems the folks who make Crisco had come up with Olean. 
an oil that fries up snacks without adding any fat or calories, make them taste specially good. And now I see what I'm part of, and it makes me feel good. Coming soon, new fat-free Olean, a good place to start. Dude here. The dude's been hired to deliver a million-dollar ransom. Her life is in your hands, dude. Ah! And now he's lost it. You got any bleeds? Bleeds. <laughs> Jeff Bridges. Life goes on, man. Ow! John Goodman. Because the whole world's gone crazy! Julianne Moore from the creators of Fargo. Where's the money, Lebowski? The Big Lebowski. It's down there somewhere. Let me take another look. Rated R. Now playing at theaters everywhere. Get you up to date on who's in the automatic bids in the NCAA tournament. Princeton out of the Ivy League, looking for a good seating. They're only lost to North Carolina. College of Charleston out of the Transamerica. Radford out of the Big South, first trip ever for Radford. Arizona with the Pac-10 bid. The upset loss last night. Won't have a perfect season in the Pac-10, but they are still the conference champion. They move on along with Davidson, Murray State, Richmond out of the Colonial, Iona out of the MAC, Illinois State of the Missouri Valley, and FDU, Fairley Dickinson, out of the NEC. Tom Green going back. San Francisco of the West Coast, Butler of the Midwest Collegiate, Valparaiso of the Mid-Continent, South Alabama, the Sun Belt, Eastern Michigan, the Mid-American, and the last to get in, Navy of the Patriot. 16 automatic bids are in, 14 more to go. There are 34 at-large bids. We are going to send you back to the Big Ten. Michigan up by 10, 42 to 32. This has been the Halftime Report. Send you back to the game. If you're watching the network, we'll be back. People need people who care. Friendly faces who will always be there. People need people who care. The Physicians Clinic of Iowa, caring for people like you, one patient at a time. At TCI, there's a new vision. Hope for a better future. Giving careers, not just jobs. A place where you can make a difference. A team to belong to. We have many career opportunities. Come, be a part of a better way. Contact your local DCI office for more information. A lot of companies, we needed an on-staff counselor who could deal with people's baggage. So we thought of fluff. I can't believe this. Charlie, uh, Charlie, Charlie. You know, when it's a dog leg left, you can't go right. Wow. Sometimes the out-of-bounds ball hits a tree and ends up sitting pretty in the fairway. What the hell does that mean, Fluff? And it's not new age mumbo jumbo. All his wisdom is golf course tested. Going in to renegotiate my contract. Uh, what do you recommend? Wedge. Discover timeless styling that goes beyond fashion. Discover superior quality and attention to detail that's backed by more than mere words. Discover the finest cruiser that delivers an extraordinary experience unmatched by any other. Discover yourself on a Royal Star by Yamaha. This halftime report is presented by 7-Up. 7-Up and your local 7-Up bottler invite you to try the crisp new taste of 7-Up. Welcome back to the SPN2 Championship Week Studios, everybody. Dave Ryan with you. Halftime Michigan, a 10-point lead on Iowa. Chicago Big Ten quarterfinal. A lot of major conference tournaments happening today. Quarterfinals and semifinals. One of those we're watching very closely is the Big 12. Quarterfinal action from KC, Kansas, Kansas State. Watch the defense for the Jayhawks. A steal. Kenny Gregory goes to Paul Pierce. Good feed back to Gregory for the finish. Flush. Right now, KU a 7-point lead. And make a 52-45 game, 9.5 to go in the second half. KU now has a 10-game win streak. When we come back, back to the UC in Chicago in the Big Ten.
coaches of champions to taste the breakfast of champions. They taste great. I don't remember them tasting this good. Yeah, they're very crunchy. I like my cereal with a lot of milk, and these hold up great. The championship taste of Wheaties. You better eat Wheaties. Life is unpredictable. Sometimes you need health insurance. Sometimes you need life insurance. And sometimes... Simone, è per te. You need investments for the future. So at the Consigo Companies, our goal is to help you protect wealth, create wealth for life. Looking for more horsepower? How about a turbo? You could install an exhaust system. A chip's always good. Ever think about simply changing your air filter to a K&N? K&N delivers more horsepower for your dollar. Up to 20 more horses for a fraction of the cost. That's because K&N filters flow over 50% more air than ordinary filters. More air means more power. And they're backed by a 10-year, 1-million-mile warranty. Call for a free brochure on the K&N retailer nearest you. K&N filters. More Center in Chicago, and we're halfway through our first Big Ten quarterfinal. Hot shooting Michigan on top of Iowa by as many as 15 in that first half. They uh, lead it here as we start the second half by 10, 42-32. They shot 63%. They made eight out of 12 threes, and Iowa at 38%, even with four threes, just not able to keep up. No, it was hard to keep up, and you see there, Reed. Got his four out of five. That's that's 12 points right there. And they just had an outstanding half. The other thing that I think is important to note, had 17 baskets, uh, baskets, Michigan did. They had 12 assists. And that means they're distributing the ball, finding the open man. That obviously was a, in a position to shoot a three. Ball jumps right out. Four assists each by Codlin and Bullock. Dean Oliver. Bowen Moore, the leading rebounder, five, including three offensive in the first half of the Hawkeyes for Daryl Moore. Michigan again comes out man to man, but you see the clock goes to 10, and they go right into a zone. They have a good sense of where Iowa wants to go with the ball, and that's where they've been able to get it. When they came back, that's what Iowa got the ball. Bowen, after almost losing it to Trailer, only able to heat one up off the top of the back. <laughs> you don't get many guarantees. <laughs> Got a guarantee. I happen to agree with the official. I thought he had all ball. Trailer had all ball. Lewis Bullock, 11 in the first half. Only one three-pointer. Gerard Ward had 10, two trays. Reed, four threes for all 12. And Robert Trailer, not one of the three-point threats. Although that wasn't quite outside the arc. It was a little farther than they normally like him to shoot. Guys again test the perimeter and look for that angle to go inside for Ryan Owen. It didn't open up very often in the first half. No, it, it didn't, and they tried to make sure they could cut. That's who they really tried to take out of the game. What a great catch that was by Bowen. They're going to have to take the shot very off balance. Bowen, five points, three rebounds in the first half. The second leading scorer and leading board man for the year. Lob it into trailer and nice anticipation by Bowen to come up from behind. <laughs> this hot shooting by Michigan, uh, not something that just happened today. Over the last three games, 54% from the field. And at the moment, 61%. I think Michigan of late has just done a better job getting a feel for who they play with. You know, they obviously with Brian Ellaby coming in, you know, same system, but maybe a little nuance has changed in it. The tractor man. Well, if he wants it, there's not much that's going to keep him from getting it. He's a big man with soft hands and quick feet. Six points and six rebounds for Robert Trailer. Michigan back up by 12. 
to the two. Yeah, he wanted to put it on the floor. You could tell he had that two. Really not taking command on both ends. Now that was a left-handed rebound. I mean, I don't know if you even noticed it. He did it with so adeptly. Such a combination of the power, which obviously comes naturally, and the finesse, the uh, the agility that, that people have marveled about throughout his career. Dave, what I've marveled about, what I've been impressed with, is that he's really matured as a player. He was really impatient last year, and he played with a pretty good player, and Maurice Taylor, who's now playing for the Los Angeles Clippers, and that's the five seconds that with Oliver on Conley. But he is much more patient now when he's throwing the ball out. Defensively, waiting to see what's going to happen. So you, a great uh, indication of that maturity you're talking about. His first two years combined, he had 45 assists. This year alone, 78 assists. Traveling for Oliver. Boy, I tell you what, and what Oliver is complaining about is McCausland and, and uh, Brandon Smith got tied up. And where Oliver was going to throw the ball, he saw uh, uh, <laughs> McCausland go down, and he was ready to throw it, so he stopped and kind of traveled. But the official never saw what, what I thought was a foul. No. Don't come like that, young fella. Whoa, I mean, he went to the hole. It looked like he was going to lay it up. You see a good pass right there. Davis tries to come. Oops, too late. Yeah, you tried to run and hide from that one. Woo! You don't want him to hit you like that. Full timeout has been called by Tom Davis, now down by 14 points, 17.01 to go, but Michigan has all cylinders firing. In 1948, who could have imagined the rage over TV, let alone a PC? FYI, Kemper did. And those who followed our long-term investment business found a new world of financial discovery. Kemper Technology Fund, where $10,000 invested in 1948 would have tuned you into $4.2 million last December. Ask your financial advisor about the thinking behind every Kemper Fund. Long-term investing in a short-term world. The call came in at 2.38 p.m. Group of girls not having fun. Mumbly, mumbly. First things first. Y'all need some fun nicknames. Brittany, the Enforcer Jones. Yeah. Susie, sweet music home. Sweet music. We're gonna try trash talking, okay? Come strong, but don't come at all. In your face. In your face. Hey, that's some fun trash. How do they feel? Deal on her. Get in school. Come on, girl, bring it up. They may not remember the message, but they'll remember the message. <laughs> okay, class, rules of driving. Norman. Uh, observe the speed limit, stay two car lengths behind, and always pass on the left. Wrong answer. There are driving schools. And there are driving schools. At the Russell Racing School in Sonoma, California, you only fail if you get passed. But don't forget your Visa card, because you won't move an inch using American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Michigan up 14, 46, 32. As always, the Tractor Trailer's number one fan is grandmother Jessie Mae Carter. Oh, hey, I'm telling you, she has fun at the game. She knows her son is, uh, her grandson is a good player. And I, I, you know what, and I was talking to uh, now coach at Eastern Kentucky, Ray McCallum, who recruited Tractor, Robert Trailer, and he talked about how his grandmother was able to keep him out of the, the the things that happen in the urban city. You know, you have people, you know, obviously doing wrong, the drugs and all that, and, and how much of that is an accomplishment, and how proud she is that Robert's been able to stay away from that kind of thing and do so well in athletics. That was Michigan's first free throw attempt of the day as Gerard Ward completed the three-point play. Yeah, the 35 second clock never moved. It's still on 35, so it's got to be somewhere around 33 or 32. To They're gonna get it to 29. That's about right. It takes about five and a half, six seconds. I did that bad math going again to get it down. But that's all it is. You see, 35 second clock. Two, three, four, five. They're gonna take it about yeah, about six. That's about right. Time out was called with 17:01. That's six seconds. Way to go, guys. <laughs> you know, hang with me, guys. Uh, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> hang with me. Glad you bailed me out, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we had every confidence. You couldn't. Davis fouled.
foul by Robbie Reed, his second. Terrific balance, terrific long-range shooting by all three, Ward, Reed, and Bullock. It's the only reason I think that Michigan is up the way they are, is those guys have shot it from the perimeter, and you said it, you pick your poison. You're going to shoot, let them shoot from outside. Uh, that the percentages are they won't make it, but here, Michigan has just been making shots. Catch them on a day when they are. Good luck. Bowen able to fake trailer up off his feet. Seven for Ryan Bowen. That's where they want to get you. If they get you in the corners, they'll trap. Otherwise, they try to stay in front of you. Just did the same move. The Shook him up. Drive Bullock. Little stop and go move. A sweet move. Enough to get you to stand up. Without the flex in your knees, it's hard for you to move. And that's when he took advantage of it. Doesn't need a whole lot of room to get past you. 13 now for Bullock. Who's called for the reach as Davis went in. Now they're going to change that. On uh, Gerard Ward rather than Bullock. And that's his third. Same, same thing right there. Then he does a nice little move there because it looked like Davis tried to get it. And then coming over, Moore thought he had a block. You ask how Moore gets rebounds, you saw he can he can get up. Great neck as well. Uh, Davis trademark in recruiting. He says, we rebound as well as anybody in the country year in, year out, because we recruit those guys. That's an act that we look for. Ricky Davis, eight to lead the Hawkeyes, along with Kent McCausland, who also has eight. Blue number one, get out from under the basket. Nice look, little uh, behind the back, no look bounce pass by Comp. But you see how quick that big man got down to get the ball? That time they were ready for the drive by Bullock, and he lost it off his own leg. Yeah, it was good defense by Oliver. He's coming there. They wanted to try to get a foul, look all ball to me. And then you saw on the, at the end, Bullock kicked it out. Michigan didn't turn it over at all the first 12 minutes, eight turnovers in the last 12 minutes. Another Michigan running opportunity after a steal. And the Hawkeyes getting back. Didn't really seen one of the Iowa trademarks, the full court pressure, uh, do a whole lot of damage yet. They haven't really, they, they haven't, I, I think, applied that pressure more than anything else. You cannot let Gerard Ward stand and shoot shots. He's shown that he can do that. You've got to go attack him now. Make him put it on the floor. 15 for Ward. Davis. Out of bounds off of Iowa, off Daryl Moore. Mm -hmm. Ward is a guy that came out of school. He was the national player of the year. They thought he was a guy that could make plays. You saw him throw it down. Now you watched him knock down a jump shot right from just inside the three-point line. One thing that happened to him, of course, early knee troubles. His first couple of years really were, were washouts because of the first one knee, then the other. And it's taken him the last two years to fully regain the confidence that he lost. Well, I think that's part of it. But I also think that as I've talked to people, when he came out as the National Player of the Year, I talked about him being a part of that Fab Five, too. But when they had practices, those other guys had a tendency to be a little bit envious of his abilities or his, his height, if you will. They attacked Gerard Ward in practice, and I think they took some of his confidence. So that and then not being able to prove yourself because you get injured back-to-back -back years really hurt him emotionally in terms of his, uh, his confidence. And now he's starting to show that he can play and play with confidence. The trailer uncovered. <laughs> <laughs> he's standing under the basket. I wasn't sure what he was going to do with it. Next thing you know, he's dunked it. <laughs> he was stunned himself. He was so open. Count that one for Ricky Davis. He's so big, so quick that under that is really on the out of bounds play. I don't know how you lose him, but somehow they lose trade. Right here, they lose it. And he gets Davis. And then next thing you know, he reaches up and he just kind of pokes it in there. That's a little poke for him. Then at the other end, he fouled Davis, who gets the three-point play. 11 for Ricky Davis, but Iowa not able to make any headway. The only run they had, the real brief 6-0 run middle of the first half. But sandwiched around that were 10-0 and 8-0 runs by Michigan. That's when they opened up as much as a 15-point lead. Ward, three-pointer, his third. That's what I'm saying. You can't, you can't let him shoot it. I mean, and that's what they've been doing. The other thing you got to think about, in the first half, points off of turnovers, there were only four by Iowa. And their press is supposed to create some offense for them, and it has not done that. Six straight shots the Wolverines have knocked down. Three of those have been by Ward. 
this is, I think, a good substitution, getting uh, Trela out of the game because he was tired. He almost got tangled up down on this end, and the officials stopped so they didn't have any uh, extracurricular activity. But that's why he fouled two plays before. He's just tired. Oliver spinning his way past Robbie Reed. Bowen for the follow. Boy, Bowen is so quick around the basket. I don't know at 6-7 how uh, effective he would be at the next level, but kind of intriguing because he has that knack that Tom Davis talks about, always able to, to run down the loose balls, the rebounds. He, first of all, he'd have to get some strength. I mean, it, at this level, he's fine, but to go to the next one and try to do he's got to get strength. You see he has some quickness. Not quite quick enough that time to get in front of Bassett and avoid the foul. First, just the fifth foul the entire game by Iowa. And the third this half. As a result, Michigan has built this lead with only one free throw. Yeah, but they shoot jump shots the way they are. <laughs> you don't get to the line that much. And that's what they've really been able to do. Tractor hadn't gotten fouled that much. Bullock and Reed, Conlon have made, and Ward have made one of the shots. Wolverine's patiently waiting for Bastard inside. It's around him, back out for Conlon's three-pointer, rebound Galloway. Now Davis ready to break down Conlon on the dribble. Draws the contact prior to the shot. First on Travis Conlon. That's a tough matchup for Conlon trying to match up on uh, Davis. He can get that all day. And the return of the tractor trailer. Front court shuttle continues for Brian Ellaby. It's Ward's turn to sit. This Davis again challenging Conlon. Bullock there to snap it down. Well, they got numbers because Brian Bowen just went down. And can they take advantage of it? Five on four. Pull up is short. Almost goaltended by J.R. Koch. Well, I think the officials felt that they didn't have a chance to go in. And that, that, then that's not good. Count that one for Dean Oliver. But when I looked at it, I was about to say what you said. It looked like it was close to goal to I'm assuming that's why they didn't call it, though. It was maybe under the rim when he made contact, if he did. And Oliver pushes it up. Bad defense on the part of Bullock right there. Who really tries to compensate. Does not stop Oliver, who finishes it, trying to complete a three-point play. Third foul on Robbie Reed. Dean Oliver. Three-point play. Iowa. Still down 12. Got to have some stops. And at some point, you figure they'll get a run going, but it still hasn't happened. We're almost halfway through this second half. Oh, they can get eight points in, in two minutes. You know that when they, the way they play defense. They can get a couple threes, and then somebody else is, you know, get a chance to hit a two. They're there. Who's missing a shoe? It's, it's Oliver's over there. But you know what? I mean, Michigan gets the basket, but a really good team is looking to find out who doesn't have the shoe, and then they go and try to attack him and make him play defense. Oliver says, I got to get my shoe. No, we're not. They, but you know what? The official won't let him stop the offense, but not stop this. Brewers been back out. Davis no, couldn't can't hang do on to the ball and get a timeout. Goal. He was trying to get a timeout, and you can't do that if you're in the air, and the officials didn't let it happen. <laughs> Well, on the bright side, <laughs> Oliver got his shoe. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll have some time to uh, cool his heels and get the shoe back on. As uh, McCausland checks in for the Hawkeye. Michigan still motoring along 63% from the field. Look by Trailer, and what a tip by Baston. Had that gone, boy, that's one for the highlight reel. He was trying to make the reel, there's no doubt about it. Galloway, 4-3, not quite Koch. Oh. One down and turns to square off with Trailer. Looked for a minute like it might be on. Trailer was ready to go, and Koch just walks away. No, it was, i tell you what happened. Baston fouled him hard, and J.R. Koch, I thought, came out trying to make sure, because he got a good hard foul trying to clear the air. And then right there, I think at the last minute, he may have realized, this is not the guy I want to be going after. Well, it's hard to see what happens there. Yeah, I think he had mistaken identity. He was Baston that got him. It's four on Maceo Baston. Davis was lobbying pretty hard for a flagrant foul, but didn't get it. And the first point of the day by J.R. Koch. 
Yeah, this has really kind of messed up their rotation. Baston having that broken foot missed four games, has come back, got some minutes in in the Wisconsin game. They'd like to keep him for the rotation, but obviously you're going to have to leave Trailer on the floor extended minutes. Baston came back Saturday. They used him for seven minutes. And very limited today because of the foul trouble. You know it's possibly not your day when you're throwing a shoe, as Oliver did. The only thing more unpredictable in nature is people. And I deal with both. You never know. Someone could be calling for a $25 titanium ice screw or a $25,000 expedition to Mount Everest. So I can't afford to miss a call. If I do, well, that means money. That's why I value GTE. Even out here, I know my calls aren't being dropped. Oops. Dropped. That's a bad word. This is the new Trans Am. And it's very hungry. <laughs> the muscle car lives. The new Firebird Trans Am by Pontiac. These days we could all use more endurance. Say about 24 hours worth. I know I could. And now I've got it. Because now the odor fighters and new high endurance deodorant last even longer. New high endurance lasts a full 24 hours. No one else is this strong, this long. Plus, it's got this new pure sports scent. So now you can smell better, longer. Guaranteed. Or call 1-800-PROVE-IT and Old Spice will buy you a stick of yours. Hey, no matter what you're into, now you've got all the endurance you need. A full 24 hours. Guaranteed. Dave Ryan checking in with the SEC quarter fight. Bama putting up a good fight. Also, Big 12, K-State hanging around with Kansas. Seven-point game back to the Big Ten in Chicago. And in our first quarterfinal, Michigan by 12, 58-46. Coming up next, the top seed co-champions from Michigan State featuring Big Ten Player of the Year, Mateen Cleaves. They will take on Minnesota. Bullock hemmed in in the corner, lost it out of bounds. We were talking about scoring in bunches. This is how Iowa normally gets started with that. Go in the corners. The worst play to go in against any defense is in the coffin corner where they can use the sideline and the baseline to trap you as well as two people from their team. It's like a quadruple team. Yeah, it does. It just, you have no option. Fairly big possession here for Iowa. Looking to get down to single digits. McCaughlin can't hit the tray. They trail by as many as 17 and have not been as close as nine at all in this second half. They were down 10 at the half, and they have also never led. This is going to be a push before <laughs> the move by Trailer on J.R. Koch's first. I'm landing. I'm pushing it. I didn't see him move at all. <laughs> I mean, I normally see that. If he pushed track the Trailer, he did not budge. He is the immovable object. Oh, no question. Bowen coming back for Koch. They're out into a, they kind of go into this 2-3 two, zone. They say a 1-2-2 two, two zone. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll flex the man. Whoa! Robbie Reed has regained some confidence, hasn't he? <laughs> I'm telling you, he's made a couple jump shots, and now he thinks the range is the court. Here he's down to cut off Oliver. Good job by Oliver to try to pick and poke, check the defense, see if it's ready to stop me. That's what a point guard should do. Poke the defense. Davis, all day long, a threat slashing in. Moore bailed out. He lost it, but Bowen was right there and has 11. He and Davis, each 11 to lead the Hawkeyes. Great pass, no looker by Bullock to Reed. He saw him all the whole time. He knew that he was about to get out of control and double team. fans trying to urge on a defensive stop. Minnesota, Michigan only one of their last six from the field. And we are at the halfway mark of the second half. Iowa has battled. They haven't gained any ground, but they haven't lost any ground in the second half. Five to shoot for Bullock, who goes to the line. And what he can do, boy, is he can, he's good with his left hand. I mean, it's almost like he prefers going left. Gets a nice pick and roll here. 
Ward came to pick. Now he'll go up. You see him put the ball away from Moore, and then he takes it away from Davis, gets it off the glass. It has a chance, but he gets fouled. Davis with his second and just a second free throw all day for Michigan. They averaged 22 attempts. Bullock fourth nationally this year, 90%. Brian Ellaby free throw line. Galloway for more. He's got it. Lewis Bullock has a great stroke. I mean, the ball looks like it's almost tickling the net. They're all time leader. 85% for his career best ever at Michigan. Both of those to get it back up to 12. Davis is stripped by Bullock and Michigan with another takeaway. Yeah, he not only did that, but he knocked the ball off of one of Iowa's, our, Iowa's players' arms. That's how Michigan got it back. Koch is back. Bob Davis won a brief word with Ricky Davis. Reed able to uh, avoid that coffin corner with the help of Trailer. Good job that time. I mean, they break the press. Uh, and they've done this the entire time. I think that's one of the things that's really hurt Iowa. I really expected it to be more of a factor. The press, that is. Michigan never bothered by it. The trailer be on baseline. <laughs> begging for it. Bullock using the Ward screen. He was begging for it. He and Ward were standing together. And Lewis said, give it here. 17 now for Bullock. Bowen took his eyes off of it just as the pass hit his hand. Things are starting to go Michigan's way, but because they're active here, Lewis Bullock does a good job. He screens. You'll see right, Ward gets the ball. You see right here, he's giving this to me a nice dribble. One stop. So again, Iowa with a chance to get it down to single digits, and Michigan here, none of it. Right back up by 14, 62, 48. I'm telling you, their ability to handle this press makes all the difference in the world. Iowa will make a run at you and get eight points before you can bat an eye because they can press or you travel. In and out by Ward. A trailer along with three black jerseys, but lost it out of bounds. Coming up tomorrow on ABC Sports, it's skating biggest stars in the Equal World Challenge of Champions. You'll see Ekaterina Gordieva, Paul Wiley, Christy Yamaguchi, and Rudy Galindo. It all begins at 4 Eastern on ABC tomorrow afternoon. Ricky Davis is back. Spots Daryl Moore, but couldn't get that one past Trailer. Look at the repeated jumps of Trailer. That's uh, that's a little Dennis Rodman there. But you, know, but you know what else it looks like? It looks like a man, a man playing with Bullock. You know how sometimes you play with, play with their kids and they just kind of keep it over their heads? That's what he looked like there. Toying with them. Exactly what he looked like. And then he just he's quick and strong enough that he can just go get it when he has to. Gone and gotten 10 boards today. Has Robert Trailer. There's another one. Oliver steals it. He sometimes loses his concentration, but principally when he's tired. And he's a little winded, and that's because Maceo Baston hadn't been able to stay on the floor long enough. And he just looked over at Ellerby, and Ellerby immediately moves to get Baston back in. Oliver out of the off Conlon. Disruptive defense by the freshman from Mason City, Dean Oliver, and a timeout with 7.43 to go. Hawkeyes still have time for a comeback, trailing by 12. Another hot dinner turned ice cold? Now there's Keep It Hot, the amazing new microwavable hot plate that keeps food hot up to one full hour. Place Keep It Hot in your microwave. The handles stay cool, but the stone is so hot it sizzles. So hot, it can even fry an egg. Sterno cans and electric hot plates could be dangerous, but Keep It Hot is cordless, insulated, and safe for any surface. Mashed potatoes get cold, but Keep It Hot potatoes stay hot. Late guests mean cold food. At the party, Keep It Hot keeps food stove top hot. Keep bread warm. Keep vegetables steaming. Keep coffee hot without reheating. Microwavable. Keep it hot. Only $19.95. But wait. Order in the next 10 minutes and you get a second Keep It Hot absolutely free. That's two for only $19.95.
To order your two Keep It Hot plates for only $19.95 plus shipping, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-379-6622. Sorry, no CODs. That's 1-800-379-6622. How do you prove you're the king of college hoops? Just log on to ESPN.com and enter the tournament challenge presented by Pizza Hut on ESPN Sports Zone. To enter, fill out your brackets, compete against thousands of other fans, make the right picks, and be crowned king of college hoops. Log on to ESPN Sports Zone and you can win a trip for two to the 1999 Men's Championship, hotel accommodations, and 64 pizzas from Pizza Hut. The tournament challenge on ESPN Sports Zone. Sign up now! Wolverines by 12, 62-50. They have never trailed in this one. They led by 10 at the half by as many as 17 here in the second half, which has only 7 minutes and 43 seconds still to go. Here is a very tough call for an official. It's a quick call, but watch the rotation of the ball. If it speeds up, watch. It speeded up, and that's how, I mean, he makes the call, but in slow motion, we can see what, what happened. And that was a heck of a call in that circumstance. Holy Ricky Davis. They don't call the travel. Oh, he travels. He may have gotten fouled the first time. I thought it was clear he got fouled the first time. Oh, they're saying that he bumped it. Oh, he just fouled out of the game. That's Macy Bastion bumped into him. And he just fouled out. Macy Bastion gone. Just his second game back after rehabbing the chip fracture in his foot. Final words from Brian Ellaby. Just two points. Iowa in the bonus, but can't get the front end. Seventeen foul right there against Michigan. So trailer who needed that rest doesn't get a very long one. They throw it away inside for Oliver. Quickly up for the three in transition, which Lewisman can't hit. Iowa does not have a three-pointer in the second half. They have not been able to buy a bucket. Not at all. And that just haven't gotten to the rhythm here yet. Early looked like they might match the marksmanship by the Wolverines. They have not been able to from long range. Jawad Ward has got Dean Oliver guarding. I can't blame him. He's a little disappointed they won't throw the ball. No, Bullock taking a very tough shot. Ward staying after it, though. But that's why he's fouled. That's why he could get it. Oliver's guarding him. Those guys have to throw him the ball. And he's a little frustrated yeah, that they is. didn't. Yes. All over his face, and for good reason. He's, I mean, he's got the position. No ball is staying there. This is not somewhere you try to, I don't think you try to beat your man off the dribble. You try to make them have to make an adjustment. Look at his face. Throw it. He's, it's, it's, Colin is coming baseline. You can throw it there. And you can see kind of the, <laughs> the disgust in his face on that play. A.C. Obass a little disgusted, too, having fouled out. But at least they have him back in time for the postseason. That was the concern when he originally injured himself. Ironically enough, at the end of a, a career-high performance, he just scored 27 against Minnesota, and it was in the final seconds when he got hurt. Travis Conlon wide, wide open, his second three. Michigan back up by 15. Now, I've always thought Conlon was, I really, of all the players that are on that team, when they really got better is when Conlon got back on the team. He hurt himself early in the season, hurt his foot, and missed some time early. They struggled with a new coach. And then when Conlon came back, it started to help their rotation because he's the one guy that's consistent. He can make shots, he'll make plays. with a lob in for trailer spins over the triple team soft touch but it popped up yeah but that's the play to make and he came off the pick holler giving me the ball because he saw trailer with inside six on the easy cut for the steal and then the reach is going to be called against iowa's kent mccausland Quick feet. Watch this adjustment. I mean, that pass is going, and you see he normally is on his heels. Most big men, if they're starting backwards, it takes them an extra second to start forward. But it was him. He backed up, came and got the steal. He's lucky that they fouled him because he was about to keep dancing in the air. He was about to get a travel. 
How many coaches have we heard during the year use the same word to describe him? Unique. Oh, he's unique. He, I, I don't know, but countless. Galloway at last hitting a three for the Hawkeyes. The first points for the walk-on freshman from Sioux City. Who earned his way to the starting lineup for Tom Davis late in the year. Iowa 5 of 17 after missing 10 straight three-pointers. The real key on the side with the, uh, on defense is they want you to bring it particularly up the left side where they run the trap. If you go to the right side, it almost automatically has backed off every time Michigan has swung it to the weak side, which is the right side. Now, again, Bullock not going inside for the Ward mismatch. Instead, Reed scoreless this half after the big first half. With I'll call that over the back. Over the back, indeed, on J.R. Koch is second. Let's look at the ACC tournament quarterfinal bracket. Maryland has already advanced past Georgia Tech. And they take on the winner of UNC and NC State, North Carolina, up at the half in that one. Remember, NC State defeated the Tar Heels just two weeks ago. It's seven on the deuce. It is Wake Forest against Clemson. They're fighting for it, too. Fighting for it to lock up a spot. Yes, almost an air ball. He shot two of them, never got there. Taylor's missed both his free throws. Badly. Iowa down 12. Davis for Bowen, stripped out by Conlon. Does it look to you like Tom Davis' is, is, uh, Hawkeyes have just not gotten in sync? Yep. I mean, because you and I have seen him play a lot better. Dip in after the miss by Davis goes for Bowen. No, as self-assured as, as Michigan has been, just the opposite for Iowa. They never really feel like they've been on the top of their game, unlike Bullock for Michigan. Wow. Yeah, I think that, that play pretty much sums it up the way things have gone. Michigan has made the plays they've had to make, and this is the right play. If you're pressured in a zone defense, push it up. You see, reaching in was McCoslin, and he threw it high. A little teardrop. A teardrop drop softly through the net. 19 for Sweet Lou. Sweet Lou he is. Sweet jump shot. He doesn't miss many of those. Rookie Davis fights so hard for that rebound. If that really sums up the day for the Hawkeyes. Well, they had it. They had it in the big... <laughs> <laughs> you know what we need to do from here on? It would be a whole lot more entertaining than you and I. Let's get Jesse May on Mike. Oh, here. please. You never want to hear from us again. <laughs> this by Davis. Trailer controlling everything now on both ends. 14 rebounds and 10 points for Robert Trailer. I'm telling you, he's dominated this game without scoring a lot of points. Just by his presence. First half, that presence allowed so many open threes that Michigan was able to open up what's been an insurmountable lead. In the second half, he's done it with his defense and his rebounding. Ward has been terrific all day. He has 20. Uh, yeah, that was with a touch. Overextended hand. Well, in his case, better late than never. And his emergence as a force in college basketball, definitely late, but at least from Michigan's perspective, it did finally happen for Gerard Ward. It's here. TCI now has digital cable available. You can receive more channels, more convenience, and more control. Best of all, TCI has the Navigator on-screen guide that allows even more convenience and control with your television viewing. With this remote control, you can easily plan viewing schedules in advance, order pay-per-view, or simply channel surf. Parents can use the parental control lockout to block out programs by title, rating, or channel. Sign up for TCI Digital Cable now and receive Stars and Encore free for three months. Strawberry Starship is having a March Madness inventory reduction and clearance sale with savings up to 50%. Slam dunk big savings on overstocked and discontinued bedroom sets, mattresses and box springs, water beds, futons, bedroom accessories, and children's bedrooms. Fast break to 90 days same as cash or one, two, or three year financing. Visa, MasterCard, and Discover accepted. Join the winning team. Shop Strawberry Starship's March Madness reduction and clearance sale going on now. Lower level Lindale Mall or Sycamore Mall, Iowa City. 
You know, you get great lemon-lime taste for 7-Up. And you can get great prizes in 7-Up's Reach for More game. Collect labels and game pieces from specially marked packages of 7-Up. Starting March 1st, watch ESPN's Championship Week to match Dan's prizes and win. And if you're a grand prize winner, you and six friends could win a trip to New York City, a tour of ESPN Studios. And when the day's over, you might have won yourself a new best friend. Frantic Friday rolls on. Updates and finals for you. Two games in the quarterfinals. First in the SEC, Kentucky by 11 over Bama. Cats now 27-4 on the year. Now ACC, a rematch of last year's final from that tournament. Carolina has a three-point lead on NC State. Back to Chicago in the Big Ten. Well, even if she's not on mic, she's going to entertain us. Hey, I'm telling you, Grandma has a good time at all of the games. She has reason to. Her son has been outstanding. I mean, he scored four points. Grandson, I'm sorry, in the fourth, scored four points in the first half with five rebounds, six in the second half. He averages 16, but he's got 10 rebounds. In the second half alone, 10 boards, 15 boards for the game as uh, Gerard Ward gets his fourth foul. His <laughs> career high, 17 boards. He's got 15 today. He's been all over the place. You see him get the steal. He got fouled there. Come up with it. Got soft hand. Make a little noise for you. Then he goes and gets this one. Taps it to himself. Stays with it. Tosses it back over his head. Just keeping the game coming to him by being around. I mean, he is just amazing for a guy that size. Highly entertaining guy, too. <laughs> Gets it from Grandma. What are you talking about? <laughs> He's even making J.R. Kotcha enjoy a little light moment here, forgetting for a second that they're beating their brains out. 71-57 is Bowen. Up to 15 now to lead the Hawkeyes. See, one of the things that Tom Davis does that's just good is he uses, like, um, free throws for substitutions because what you do is it's, it closes out the clock in terms of letting guys get up on the ball and then get into the press they want to get into. This is basically a semi-stall here. I mean, they, they're just going to try to milk the clock. It's exactly what you should do. That's just strange. for that one shows the great hands, even though he can't finish. That, that was also strength, because Davis came over, and you thought Davis was going to have the ball. But at least they go a possession and get a, get a look. And that's what you have to make sure of. A big dribble by Davis went off the foot of Conlon. Three-point try, Luresman. Bowen has the mismatch. Bullock flop, no call. Luresman again got the three. Two threes for the sophomore from Cedar Rapids. Ryan Luresman. And it's an 11-point game, 2.22 to go. Iowa has never cut it to single digits in the second half. Michigan has been a big part of that. That press, Michigan has made, every time there's been an adjustment made by Iowa, Michigan has made it, for example. If you throw it to the corner, the next pass is back under the basket. Well, Michigan get that a little while ago. They now can't get it, but they just go skip a pass. Now. Bullock, the runner off one foot. And a nice save by Moore, but look who it goes uh -oh, to. Uh -oh. Uh oh I thought he was looking to take him to three. But the track is looking like a D-back on that one. Yeah, free safety laying in wait for that one. Laying in the cut. Glance at the clock by Reed. 17 still on the shot clock as they wind it inside a minute 30. See, with this lineup on the floor, it's hard to press Michigan because they got Conlon, Bullock, and Reed. Those are all three guards, though they let uh, Conlon play the toughest guy if they have to, but he's a good ball handler. Conlon's runner off the top of the backboard. They stay after it. And the foul with a minute 14 to go. And on the Gerard Ward for Michigan. Michigan foul number 32, Gerard Ward is He fouled out. You know, another way Trailer makes his teammates better is Josh Aslan. A slender 6'11", 215, but hanging around the tractor trailer, he's up 20 pounds. If he keeps uh, following <laughs> a fine eating example like that, he'll get some of that power. Although Trailer, as Ward gets a hand having fouled out, a bit of self-discipline by Trailer. He has uh, bypassed all of uh, Jesse May's sweet potato pie, his all-time favorite dish ever since Thanksgiving. Well, to stay in 
fighting form. Well, that's one of the things they talked to him about coming out over the summer, was that he needed to make sure he maintained some good eating habits because he, he has to get his energy. And, he, you know, it's just, it, it wears him out if he has to carry all that uh, extra weight up and down the court. But it's hard to turn down some good sweet potato pie now. Let me tell you. As soon as they get through the NCAAs, <laughs> he'll make up for lost oh, time. Oh, I, I guarantee you, Grandma will make him a good one. Bowen gets them both. And at last, the Hawkeyes have it down to nine. Is there enough time for that to matter with a minute 14 to go? They get Bowen out, Jason Bauer in. The other thing they did, uh, Michigan did, they ran back the trailer out, and they left the three guards and, and they, uh, Brandon Smith as part of the group to bring it in, getting the trailer some rest. Coming up, quarterfinal number two here in the Big Ten, Minnesota, and number 12, Michigan State, here on the Deuce. Minnesota advancing yesterday, 64-56 past Northwestern. Michigan State had the first round by as the co-champ with Illinois in the top seed. I mean, as Iowa prepares to go, I mean, we still have a minute eight to go. And, you know, it looks tough for them. As they prepare to go to the tournament, will this be look at, uh, looked upon, if it happens as such, as a quality loss? I would think it probably would be. Because in the beginning of the season, I think Tom Davis knew he was going to have a young team in terms of his guards. And they really didn't load up on the front end in terms of non-conference opponents. And that could be something that when the, the committee looks at, can be something that may hurt them a little bit in terms of trying to get an at-large berth. Davis also says, we're better than we were last year, but the, the Big Ten Conference is so much better that that's not necessarily evident in our record. They were 12-6 and six in the league last year, 9-7 and seven this year. But he says, there's no question, we're better. Yeah, well, I, he, well, he may be right, he's better, but the only re way you can be evaluated is based upon what everybody else is doing on a given year. So being better than last year is good for his program, but I don't know if that's going to be the thing that gets him into the tournament. The problem for the Hawkeyes has been uh, the fact that their non-conference schedule was uh, not exactly loaded up with heavyweights. No, uh, Chicago State is one that you can see 3 or 3 I mean, you just take a look at it, and that's the problem that they have to deal with. And they lost to it. And Northern Iowa is a rivalry. So that's a game that, though there's a low RPI, it's going to be competitive. But they just had a lot of teams on there that just quite don't do it. So if they're sitting on the bubble, that 68 would be a reason, as well as the losses to uh, Northern Iowa and at home to Minnesota, although that was a tight one. They have knocked off Purdue big, and they swept Indiana, so they can make their case. Well, they got a case to be made. I mean, I think everybody's going to look at them hard, but the 68 is going to be a problem, and I think as part of that RPI, you look at the opponent's schedule and your, your schedule, that's going to be a, a factor in this. Bowen inside, pass trailer. Ryan Bowen, the only consistent offense that Iowa has managed here in the second half as they again cut it back to nine just inside the final minute. Full timeout call by Dr. Tom Davis. Michigan, a minute away from a possible rematch with Michigan State. The View Greyhound Park and Casino Monday through Friday from now until March 20th, you could win $100 cash every two hours from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. You could be the big old lucky winner during O Lucky Days. Register to win every Monday through Friday beginning at 9 a.m. You could be one of the 90 winners. So come out and play. Every day could be your O Lucky Day. Duke Greyhound Park and Casino. Come out and play. Years ago, the personal computer was invented in a garage. Cool. Hey, check this out. So why is it that about the only place to buy one today is in a warehouse? Hello? Hello? Can anybody help me? Well, computer renaissance is different. We think that buying a personal computer should be a personal experience. And we sell used computers that can do everything you need for a lot less money than at a warehouse. I have a question. Computer renaissance. We buy, sell, and trade used and new computer equipment. ESPN 2's presentation of Championship Week is presented by 7-Up. 7-Up and your local 7-Up bottler invite you to try the crisp new taste of 7-Up. And in part by Kemper Funds, long-term investing in a short-term world. And by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealers. Back again, the United Center, Dave Barnett and Quinn Buckner. Michigan by nine, under a minute, our first quarter final. 
winner goes on to beat the Michigan State Minnesota winner. They are quarterfinal number two, about 25 minutes after this one concludes. And the pass by Bullock to Trailer hit the end line, or else a foot did for the tractor trailer. But I want to tell you what, watch this catch. This is one handed. Look at that. I mean, he, just got, uh, he did. He just gobbled that ball up just like a short, like it was nothing. I mean, obviously, it doesn't make any difference for Michigan because they don't get anything out of it. Brandon Smith come in there and get him a block. The freshman from Amarillo up for a block. They think he's going to be a good player. They, they think he's got a chance. And you, if we've watched him some in practice, I mean, you can see he goes up and gets that clean block. In high jump, 6'8". Terrific athlete. He has Conlon out on the run out. Show. Now, he had that other basket you like because you like that, you know. Something about number 23 that's in the building. Oh, thank you. Number 23 in the building. I had to let you go with that one. But I'm telling you, that was a heck of an athletic play he made. Oh, he was in the air, kind of hung. I thought he was going to dunk it. Sunday, ESPN is Selection Central first at 6.30. The men's selection special presented by GTE, Chris Fowler, Dick Vitale, Digger Phelps, Quinn Buckner. The run down the brackets, then at 7.30 Eastern, the women's NCAA selection special presented by State Farm with Robin Roberts, Mimi Griffin, and Rebecca Lobo to preview the women's NCAA championship. Foul by Daryl Moore with 36.4 seconds to go. All Michigan starters in double figures. A terrific balanced effort today for the Wolverines, who finished 11 and 5 to get the number four seed, 21 and 8 overall. Big wins early. First team to beat Duke. More than 30. They beat uh, Syracuse. They won the first meeting in Ann Arbor against Michigan State. And one uh, that Indiana will not soon forget. No, Indiana won't forget it. You know, Gerard Ward knows that his team has done well in the second half of the season. I think early in the first half, they played against two teams, pretty good teams. Eastern Michigan has Earl Boykins and Derek Dow. Eastern Michigan is going to the dance. Western Michigan was good over there. They lost to Western Michigan as well. That gave people reason to pause after they had gone with, this, uh, with the firing of Fisher and Brian Ellaby took over. Oh, put the rest. Dr. Tom will uh, sit back and be a very interested observer on the selection Sunday. Yeah, he'll be. Now, this may come back. Back at you, jump ball. <laughs> Look at that, it's a jump ball. But you know what this is? This is a preview of the future That's of the, the future. Big Ten right here. Yeah, they've done it before. Because both of them are freshmen. He tries to come with a windmill. That's Brandon Smith. Not happy. Ricky Davis wanted a jump ball. Oh, you can't windmill it. Uh oh, hey, don't don't bring it in here. The house is closed. <laughs> this is my house. <laughs> Take it back. Brandon Smith gets a pair. Put an asterisk by that block <laughs> by Davis, though. Davis got himself a heck of a block there. Tomlin gets a block on the three. was trying to foul trailer and they finally decided against that this is a michigan team and i contend this may be as good as they play but iowa might be better than indiana i'm gonna tell you michigan played a heck of a game here never trail and on to round three the semis with either michigan state or minnesota awaiting terrific day for the uh, Michigan Wolverines, and particularly the upperclassmen, showing their great range in the first half. So on they go past Iowa, 77 to 66. Coming up for Eastern here on the Deuce, Minnesota, Michigan State, followed by Wisconsin and Illinois on ESPN Plus, and at 10 Eastern, Indiana and Purdue. Again, our final, the Wolverines 77, the Hawkeyes 66. ESPN News is coming up next.